I'm here in fabulous Soho, New York, in front of House Interior, where we're gonna find out everything we can about artwork and accessories. Come with me. Tell me how you got the guts to open up a place like this. It, it definitely took some guts. Um, it, you know, I started uh, at a prestigious interior design firm and afterwards I decided I really had this drive to, to start something on my own. I would constantly get this question from my friends who were my age, how, you know, how can I decorate my home affordably? You know, and so that was the opportunity to see what's high end and where you can mix in low end. Mm -hmm. So this store really is based, is, de is dedicated to that. Our products are, everything is under 300 and we really source with small, small artists and smaller collections for timeless pieces. It's a way for us to open up the world of interior design and make it accessible for everyone and not just, you know, keep going with that exclusive, you know, concept that most people have. Yeah, and it seems like you have a mixture of both vintage and modern pieces to keep it fresh. Yeah, I think it's it's really important to, to mix in, you know, the, something that's old with something new. Um, and, it, it, you know, it adds a sense of history. So, you, you know, once the, the lines start to become blurred and you don't know when you got it or where it came from, you know, I think that's something that's really beautiful and should be celebrated. And in looking around your store here, it's more focused on accessories and textures and pattern. How does that play into your design? You know, the store here is really a way for me to express myself and bring my, you know my design out to the public to the street so it is it is a little bit indulgent it's really the things that I absolutely love that are in the store um, you know I think that for me modern design is really in my aesthetic you know layering patterns graphics you know seeing what other options there are other than just like a pop of like celadon you know mm -hmm. that's that's it you know and it's a it's an aesthetic choice that we have here um, but everything is small and accessible so you know if you move in New York City which you know we've all done like four times it's about being able to take those objects and move to another home and have it completely you know transform you know wherever it is in its new environment so this is our way of kind of showing how transitional and you know transformative small pieces can be to any home wherever you live. So what's your philosophy when it comes to accessories in a commercial or a residential space? Um, I think it's one of the most important parts of any project. It's really the completion, it's the styling, and that's really what pulls the project together always. And that's really, that gives it the wow factor, it's the it's what people can hold and pick up and touch and feel, and, and that's really what connects you know, an individual to the space. So I think accessories are incredibly important. You know, of course there's a, there's a limit to, you know, you can over accessorize easily. Um, but I think it's about intuitively what you want. Do you want the tray there? Does it have a function? What's the point of it being there? And if you can't answer that question, like I, I would maybe consider potentially taking it away. Um, which is different than the concept of artwork in my belief because that's really a decorative thing and it's where, you know, you really have the ability to focus, put a put a focal point in the room and really emphasize what's going on in the floor plan and, and how you've set up the space. So whether it's doing a picture wall or doing one large canvas, you know, that's your opportunity to really, you know, highlight the space. Well, and I also see that you have a wallpaper line within your, um, within house here. Is that something that you consider an artwork form as well? Absolutely. It's the easiest way for me to transform a space. So if you're feeling you can't commit to a piece of artwork or, you know, even if you find really, you know, there are wonderful sites now for affordable artwork. Work. It, you know, you don't have to buy one of the great masters. Um, but it's one of the easiest ways to, to totally transform a wall. So if it's a powder room or just your headboard wall, it really changes everything. And, and I think it's a, it's a great way and it's really making a comeback right now. You know, 10 years ago, it was, you know, no one touched it. But really now there's so many different styles and tastes. It's really, it's one of my favorite tools. So what's next on the horizon for you? Oh goodness. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we're still continuing with our, um, with, with all of our interior design work and we're hoping to open a second store and design a line of our own products so we're going to keep going and you know, we're really excited about everything and I have a really amazing team behind me so I'm, I feel really lucky. So what advice do you have for interior design students? Um, I think it's about to learn, it's, a, it's also about learning as much as possible while you're in school. So if you have that opportunity to send an interior designer a question or asking a shop owner, you know, what it's like or inviting someone out for coffee and really talking about their experiences, um, you know, I think that's a really beautiful way of, of finding out information that you have questions about because often, you know, in school, it's, it, that's not presented because it's a very, you know, um, subjective experience. So you really 
easy. You have to go find it yourself, those answers to your questions. And um, people are always so receptive. If I don't if I don't know, I ask someone else, a colleague, a, a mentor or something, and you really just, you need to go out there and find your answers. And um, it's a really great way to learn more about the field and make sure this is what you're passionate about. Here's your assignment. Go to the chicest shop in your neighborhood and take photos of their visual merchandising. Be prepared to bring those photos back to class and tell us why it's effective. Remember, this shows your true design eye, so make it good. <laughs>